It's good to be in the house of the Lord and bless the King of Kings. Got a little music going on too. Come on. Praise God. I want to say, um, greet all our online audience. Thank them for being here, being part of what's going on from all around the globe. Tierra's in in, uh, Brazil, I believe. She's in Brazil watching. She watches online from from Brazil. Um, She's gone there to, um, I think, for at least a year to teach. And so she's doing extraordinary there and so we bless her watch god bless you we're waving at you we can't see you waving but you should wave back and for wherever you are there's lots of of people all around the united states and in different parts of the of the world that are uh locked into what's going on here and they get their um time with the lord before us together so we bless you and thank you for being part of what's happening you know if any good thing that is happening in your life, God wants to multiply the good things. Let the good things in our lives be multiplied. Um, sometimes, let me just, let me do a little, a little business first, um, just a little church business. Uh, when we come up to a time of worship, the altar is always open. This is never a time that the altar is not open. It's always, we don't have to come up and open it. It's always open. So if you want to come, you got an issue or something, you're bringing that before the throne, come before the throne. You don't have to wait for somebody to call you. Javon doesn't have to call you. A worship leader doesn't have to call you. It's, the altar is always open. Some of you young people who are, who are younger than some, some of us, uh, come up and get into the presence of the king. Um, if you, go, if you go to a stadium to watch an event, a concert, a sporting event, it seems that the seats in the front, this is my observation, that the seats in the front are always more expensive than the seats in the very back. Why would that be? Because the proximity has greater value. Come on and get into an environment where the presence of God is with you. And I'm not saying God is not everywhere. He is. He's omnipresent. But there's, a, there's, a, there's something about being close into him, to be with him. This is always open. Always open. Young people, come and worship God. You're helping create an atmosphere of worship and an experience before the king. Let me just tell you something that's going to happen soon. Is you'll be, in, you'll be in an environment and just worshiping the Lord, and then something you're asking God to do and been asking for years, it will manifest itself. Somebody will get out of a wheelchair and just start jumping. And so sometimes you can wait for some organized word to happen or a declaration that comes from me or from Derizetta for another leader on the stage. But it really is the Lord doing his work, not us doing his work. So at any time, anticipate the uh, unusual expectation that God's going to do what he does. He's a God of no limits. That's how we know him. That's how we worship him. That's how we expect to encounter him. He's a God of no limits. The campaign we're doing is no limits. Um, It's expanding our campus and transforming our community and having an impact not only here in the Northwest, but around the globe. Be a part of it. Get a part of what's going on. I'm going to encourage you today to make a pledge of some kind on this card. Turn that in. Turn it in at O-Info. This is just a record. If you you want to make a pledge and take it home and put it on on your refrigerator with some magnets, just to remind yourself, we're gonna, I'm going to do something to move what we're doing forward. This is so critical for us. It's just because what we're doing is taking what's happening here, which is a unique thing, and expanding it around the globe. I can go to back to Acts. 
when the disciples had received the baptism of the Spirit. And the church is infantile, but it starts to grow. Peter preaches and thousands are saved. The first message that Peter preaches, 5,000, it says in the scriptures. That's the men. They didn't even count the women and children. And the church is birthed, and it becomes a movement that brings us here today, billions of people, billions, the largest movement in the globe spiritually is Christianity. Billions are in the kingdom of God. But the seed of that started at that day on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. And if they'd have said, oh, that's nice, it's a personal thing, and gone home, we wouldn't be here today. But God. So I feel like that God has given us, brought us here over the last number of years. Many of us have been here for a long time. Some of us for a short time. But we're all here together to do the things that God's called us to do to break the boundaries of limitations. Because there's people in, in the Seattle, the Northwest, who are struggling deeply. And they can't get out of their struggle if we don't set them free. We have an assignment, a responsibility. And we're going to follow that assignment. So do what you can. Uh, if you give something significant towards that, I want to I do something significant too. Uh, I think it's reciprocal. Uh, I, I haven't, this is the first time I've ever worn this little, this uh, overcomer, um, what do they call this stuff? What is it? Merch. Yeah, there you go, merch. The merchandise. So I haven't, I, this is the merchandise. I want to I give merchandise away. I, I want you to give something significant in the kingdom of God. I want to give you merchandise. I want to give you stuff that you like that looks good. Uh, I may not look good in this, but it looked good in the mirror that when I put it on this morning. And, and there is that let me out of the house, so uh, it must be okay. Why is that important? Because as you represent the things of God, God shows up with you. When I was, when I was a kid growing up, I had hopes and dreams. But I was just a, a ghetto kid from South Central. And what are the chances? Because every kid had hopes and dreams. Um, but my hopes and dreams were different. Because I knew the Lord was with me. And every hope and dream that I had, he brought to pass. Even seeing Derizet in the eighth grade in a vision. He brought that to pass. So I'm just saying you're in that season now where God's heart and desire is to do extraordinary things through you and for you. He's just looking for agreement from you. So join him. Get involved. God, I'm going to do something that's, that's extraordinary without limits. Um, if you go to Mary... When the angel shows up to Mary, and she's a sweet, sweet young girl, but she has no expectation in her life that she's going to be the mother of Jesus. That's not one of the things she's praying about. And when the angel shows up and gives her the word, she's like, how can this be? Who am I? I don't... I, I've never even been with a man. This is not impo this is impossible. And he walks her through the process and she says, as you desire with your servant. Come on. And watch this. You ought to read the scriptures again. And every time significant things happen, the scripture says, and Mary ponders those things in her heart. When Jesus was born in a manger, 
when the shepherds were out singing, when the angels come, Mary ponders those things in her heart. All the way through the whole experience with Yeshua till she's at the cross. And Jesus finishes his, his responsibility as the first son, the firstborn, by saying to John, who was his beloved disciple, hey, behold, look at, this is your mother now. And looks at Mary and says, hey, this, this is your son. This is your son now. He will take care of you. And John takes her in for the rest of her life. I'm just telling you what, there's nothing that God has not taken care of. So there's nothing you need. There's no challenge that's coming in your life. There's no issue. There's no pandemic that he has not already handled. In a great house, there is abundance. And for us today, abundant peace. I want to offer you the peace of God, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that just doesn't make any sense, where the guy sitting just to your left or your right is freaked out, but you are in perfect peace. The same drama that they're experiencing is the same drama that's coming against you. But the drama doesn't move you because you have an anchor that they don't have. So you should take your anchor and give part of that anchor away. I want to talk to you today about abundant peace, the peace of God. In a great house, there is abundance. Let's look at, let's look at some characteristics of abundant peace. The first one is prayer. Got to get a prayer life. And prayer is not just asking God to do something. It's talking with God. It's talking and listening. Learn how to speak when it's time to speak and learn how to be quiet when it's time to listen. Spend time talking and listening to Father God. That's, that's the number one characteristic for abundant peace. Jesus has given us an open door to take long walks with God. You ought to spend some time talking to God. Some time listening to God. Hey, Dad, how are you? Can we talk today? And there's times in my journey with God, I would, I would open up with that, just kind of offer, and then the Lord would, would say, I'm going to talk to you too about something. Why haven't you? And I was like, what? Sorry, Father. Or he would tell me sometimes, why don't you do the things I tell you to do? And I would say, I th- I'm doing exactly what you told me to do. What haven't I done? And then he'll pick out something that I thought was completely insignificant. But it was significant to him. And I would correct it. Times of, I made commitments to get up early and spend time with God. And I did it for a little while and then I stopped because I was sleepy. Or I had little kids that would, would just kept me up at night or, or I was doing other things that I thought were more important. And then he would bring that back to me, not, not to crush me, but just to encourage me. They would say, the best way is this way. Why are you going that way? Then he would, he would turn me around. And I'm saying those, those times became so critical for me that my growth and my development was built during the times of building intimacy with God. And now I talk to him all the time, and I talk and I listen. And you're going to spend your, your cultivate a great relationship with God through the combination of talking and listening. 
You can't talk all the time, and you can't just listen. You have to do both. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, give me an example of that reality in the life of Jesus. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he got up, went out, and made his way to a deserted place, and there he was praying. Simon and his companions searched for him, and when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go to a neighboring village so that I may preach there also. This is why I have come. So he went into all of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Jesus goes and he prays and talks to God so that he could come out of that prayer time and do the works of God. Listen. Jesus would go into the presence. If anybody didn't need to pray, it's Jesus. And was his life habit was rising up early and praying and having this dialogue with Father so that when he came out of the dialogue with Father, he could go do the work God had called him to do and power followed, the anointing followed the work of God. Listen, that's a pattern. You can look at that and say, well, that's Jesus. No, that's you. Jesus is modeling you. That we should talk like Jesus, look like Jesus, act like Jesus. That's the model of life for Jesus. That's our model. So I, gotta, I get up, spend some time in the presence. Before you turn on some other stuff. Before you get sidetracked with all kinds of things of life. Get up and spend some time with the king. Um, I would take time during the day, early in our marriage, I would take time during the day, and then the Lord corrected me and said, you're stealing from your children. They're not going to grow up healthy without an impartation from you. So you need to get, change our prayer time to the morning. You get up early in the morning. When they're asleep, you should be up praying. I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't say that to him in his face, but he already knew. <laughs> so I said, help me. And he did. He adjusted my schedule. And I started becoming an uh, early morning riser, which I was not that before. So I could spend the time with him, get, get the word that came from him, and then do what he called me to do during the day. And I got smarter. I was already semi-smart, but I got smarter. People would say, how did you know that? I didn't want to say, well, I was up at five this morning praying and the Lord showed me. He's going to show you things as you, as you start developing this dynamic prayer life with him. And it's talking and listening. And don't put pressure on either one. Sometimes you're going to come before the Lord and you don't have anything to say. Then be still. Well, I can't hear him. Then just be quiet. If he's not speaking and you're not picking it up in your spirit, because the Holy Spirit will speak to your human spirit. And it takes time to develop that, and we're going to walk through that too. But let it develop as God develops it. And it starts sometimes when you're thinking, I, I feel like, I'm not sure, but I feel like God is saying to me. And then you're, it's going to, he's going to direct you on how to make sure that that which you think is God becomes a surety. And you're not making mistakes by trial and error. Because experience is the hardest taskmaster of all. Here's principle number two in abundant peace. Get dunked in the spirit. To be deeply immersed into the things of God. Acts 4, 29. And now, Lord, consider their threats. These are the disciples that have, that have been threatened 
because they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and doing the things of God. And now the religious leaders are against them and they're saying, they're giving threats of, of destruction. And here's their prayer. Lord, consider their threats and grant that your servants may speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand for healing and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's how signs and wonders are done. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God boldly. Yay. Now the entire group of those who believed were of one heart and mind and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but instead they held everything in common with great power. The apostles were giving testimony to the stand up again, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And great grace was on them all. For there was not a needy person among them because all those who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. This was then distributed to each person as any had need. Now, this was a life habit that was not going on before, but, but when the presence of God comes, it shifted the atmosphere from an atmosphere of preeminence individually to preeminence corporately. And people didn't give what they didn't have. They only gave what they, what they wanted to give. There was, there was no mandate. They gave what they, what they chose to give. It wasn't a requirement. It's never a requirement. It's free will. It's always free will. You don't get a special button, a special badge, a special seat. Ah, um, well, there's, there's $100 seats. There's no $100 seat. This is not a ball game. The poor of the poor can sit anywhere, and the rich of the rich can sit anywhere. It's, there's no value attached to anything like that. The only honor that's attached is the king. So people came and they gave because they had an abundance to give. Because you can't give what you don't have. And if you need it, you should keep it. Don't give it. Keep it. But when you, God touches your heart to give, to be the difference maker in somebody else's life, do it. And, that, and the church found that principle and exploded. And thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and and millions came into the kingdom of God. But these guys were dunked in the spirit. They were immersed into the things of God. Got to get baptized in the spirit. I'm just telling you, it's difficult to, to do all the work of the king if you're not baptized in the spirit. Um, the word baptism to means, means fully immersed into. Fully immersed into. So we think it, it's, you think baptizing the Spirit, it means somebody got born again and then we took them in the back and we dunked them in a the tank and people clapped. And then they got out wet and then, and then they went and changed, dried off and put some clothes on again and I got baptized. That's a, that's a symbol. It's a symbol of what should be happening to you spiritually. That your spirit man that lives inside of you, you have a body, that looks like your body, a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and a spirit. You got to get that spirit, man, gets activated again, the spirit that was dead when you got born again, and you became part of the body of Christ. But you got to get dumped in the spirit. You got to get into the spirit so that your, your fingers uh, wrinkle. Like you're sitting in a, in a hot tub for a long period of time. You got to get that spiritual. So spiritually, you're just walking along in the journey of life, and you're 
your spirit, man, is all wrinkled from time spent with God. And then you say, no, no, you, you and the brown, come here. Here's what the Lord is saying. You're not going to suffer, but God has said, and you don't even know who that guy is. And then he says, how do you even know me? How, how did you, you don't even know, how did you know I was going through that? And they start, they get broken, and they're not even born again yet. And then you say, it's Jesus, it's not me. Come here, give me your hand. It's time for you to get right with God. Are you okay with that? And you're like, yes, what do I do? And then you, and then you lead them. And then, you, and then it gets so exhilarating for you going, next. Who's next, God? And then you drift for a little bit and become this crazy fanatic for a while. And then you balance yourself, yourself back out again. And then you start living your life in the journey, in the walk with Jesus. Sometimes you'll see this manifestation played out here with Derizette because she'll be calling you out. I mean, she'll call you out in a heartbeat. Come here, you three. The three of you, stand up right now, you know. And she'll be reading your mail. And you're like, hey. And I know that when I first got, when we first got married, Darius Ed would have, have dreams and visions. She would say, Gordon, I had this dream last night. And I'm like, hey, woman. Because I wasn't, I wasn't like Mr. Clean when we first got married. You know, I'd play pro football with a bunch of dudes that were not clean at all. And I wasn't dirty, but I wasn't super clean either. And, but the Lord was giving me motivation on how to be clean. He was saying there's nothing going on, nothing you're thinking, nothing is, that you want to do and nothing that you're doing. I'm not, all, I'm not revealing. I'm exposing everything, Gordon, and you're going to be naked before me. And any time you even think about doing something, I'm revealing it to Derizet. And I was like, doggone it. God wants to clean some things because he's going to dunk you in the spirit. And I, I, don't, I don't mean like a basketball where you're dunking a basketball. I'm talking about when I was a kid, we'd go out and, and swim in the pool. It was a city pool. And God would dunk you in the pool. They would, you'd get dunked in the water. And they'd hold you down. They'd hold you down so they figured that you, if they didn't let you up, you, you were going to drown, right? I, I don't know how we survived because <laughs> kids would hold us down forever. I mean, they would just hold us you down, right? Until you, <gasps> until you came out of the, <gasps> breathing like that. That's, that the, the, the Lord wants to immerse you in the spirit so that all, that all you want. Well, I just want to watch the game. No, -uh, you ain't even dunked. You don't even care about Who's playing? Because he's your life. Get dunked. Your power's going to change. Your authority's going to change. Miracles. Supernatural things that have never happened. This guy prays and prays and prays and nothing. You just say, uh, and it happens. You didn't even say though, you didn't even articulate it properly. But he knew what you meant when you said <laughs> and don't measure yourself against these people you can't these are leaders in the kingdom these are extraordinary men and women extraordinary families and if you're measuring yourself against those that are here you're going to think it's good but it's not good. You ought to measure yourself against that guy in the gutter. Measure yourself against the guy that Joseph and I were driving and a guy's w walking down the middle of the street completely out of his mind. Cars are choo choo boom, 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 boom. And he's right, it's cars passing him. Out of his mind. In our Metron. We have to fix that. 
But we're not going to go on our own. We're going to go with Jesus. But right now, you need to get dunked in the Spirit. If you're filled with the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. Find yourself praying in the Spirit all the time. So God could give you a higher level of anointing so that you can function in it naturally. And you'll speak the word of God boldly because you'll know it. Here's number three, know God's character. Pray, get dunked in the spirit and know the character of God that gives you the ability to hear God's voice. You got to study the word so that you know the character. God does certain things certain ways. Follow his character. Romans 1.20, for this, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. So God has revealed that he's God through the master of creation itself. If you, don't, if you don't even believe in God, you ought to believe at least in God by the, by the systems that he's created. Here's, here's one little simple system. It's one of the most powerful systems that you have is that, is that God created this whole system this way. Well, some, something did. Maybe it was the Big Bang. Maybe it was the Big Bang. And here's what the Big Bang created. It created a need in us for oxygen. And we give out carbon dioxide. And he took every green thing and gave it a need for carbon dioxide and for it to kick out oxygen. The perfect system that we couldn't survive without that system is by chance. You got to be stuck on stupid to believe that. <laughs> Turn the meter off, stupid dude. The food you eat, seeds come from seeds that reproduce based on its own nature. So an apple seed will produce an apple tree, which produces apples. Because creation demands a creator. Except for us. Of course not. It's only somebody who's shouting louder than those who know. You know the truth. You should have a platform, and God has given you a platform. Don't be afraid of the voices that are counter to truth. Verse 21, for though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or showed gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And in an exchange, bad exchange, Exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. They worship that. They worship something they created. We don't do that now. We, we, we worship cars or, or houses or vacation units or models or whatever. But it's all created stuff that's not worthy to be worshipped by the, like the living God. They exchange the truth. Therefore, God delivered them over into then God delivered them over into the desires of their hearts to sexual impurity, so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. This is, this is America today. Keep going. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served what has been created instead of the Creator who is praised forever. Amen. For this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions. Their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. Their men in the same way 
also left natural relations with women and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. What, what's, what is scary is how that has now even moved into the church. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, Inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know God's just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them as well. That's a culture. That's a culture in America. It's a global culture. Well, you, you, you're hurting my feelings. I'm saving your life. Don't be afraid to save somebody's life. Now listen, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Now watch this. But he is not going to participate in things that are ungodly, that bring death. So you've got you've to learn. You've got to get really good at this, how to, how to reach into somebody's world and bring them into truth without crushing them. So I got to love people when I hate what they're doing. (sighs) Can I just crush them? No, you can't crush them. You got to love them. But what they're doing is so, just just drives me nuts. I understand. But you got to love them anyway. So that the love that you have for them becomes so attractive that they wake up and leave the garbage behind and follow you into the kingdom. What's amazing is Jesus has given us a pattern for that. That's our way. That's his way. I've got three more, but I don't have three more of time. So we're going to pick that up with faith in God. Have faith in God. I want to. I want to close with that one. Put your trust in King Jesus. Just, just make a decision. Put your trust in King Jesus. He will extinguish all fear. Whatever you're afraid of, King Jesus has got this. Ah, Pastor G, I'm just really struggling with. Doesn't matter. I'm struggling with my family. Yeah, I know. Trust King Jesus. Psalms 1, Psalms 25 says this. Lord, I appeal to you. This is David. My God, I trust in you. Do not let me be disgraced. Do not let my enemies gloat over me. No one who waits for you will be disgraced, God. Those who act treacherously without cause will be disgraced. Make your ways known to me. This is David now. Teach me your path. David, who had this intimate relationship with God. Guide me in your truth and, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. And I wait for you. The word wait means to be, is to mean woven together, bonded as one. I, I bond my life to you all day long. I'm connected to you. Remember, Lord, your compassion and your your faithful love, for they have existed 
from antiquity forever. I trust you, God. I know you're with me. I know you love me. My life is interwoven with your life. We are one. And I don't know where I start and you begin and you begin and I start, but we are one. And my faith, my trust is in you, God. Come on. Doesn't mean that it's easy. It just means that it's worth it. Doesn't mean you don't have challenges and in a world that's full of corruption. But instead of the, the corruption and destroying the world, God has come and empowered us to save the world. It's just tough. But the spirit is, that lives in you is able. And you are able. Father, release your anointing in this atmosphere. Send us your authority and power. Help us to be like you, to reflect you. We strike the enemy in all its forms. Drive out that lying, manipulative, demonic adversary that comes against our house and against our children, against our spouses, against us. In every way the enemy has fought us, defeat that enemy. Defeat him in our health, defeat him in our relationships, defeat him in our legacy, defeating in our resources, defeat that demonic adversary in every way. Clean us, God. Give us pure hearts. We repent for all the mistakes of the past, the things that we've said and done that we shouldn't have said or shouldn't have done. And we won't repeat them again, but but we've already created a disaster. But you, God, can fix it. You can turn it around right now just by one word. So we speak the word of life and restoration, knowing that you're willing and able. You're willing and able. I'm telling you, sometimes you can make such a mess. I've done it. That you're thinking there's no way you're embarrassed by the mess that you've made and things that you've done. And then you can go to God and maybe a little afraid to go to God because you know, you're thinking you've been convinced that he's a lightning bolt God. And as soon as he sees your face, he's going to drop a lightning bolt and destroy you. And that's not God at all. He's not trying to get you. He'd already have gotten you. He's just trying to save you and heal you. And redeem you. And save and heal those who are important to you. And give you the desires of your heart that which he has spoken to you even when you were young that he has sent an angel to to guard and protect you and watch over you Father we know that there are no limits to you and our faith and our trust is in you break all fear all uncertainty and help us to walk in your presence if you haven't given your life to Yeshua, that's how it starts. Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as Lord and Savior, Master and King. If you watch me online, you're here in the house. You haven't given your life to Jesus. You need to do that right now. You just need to say yes to Jesus. You should lift up your hand and say yes to Jesus. If you haven't given your life to Yeshua, if you watch me online, I want you to just lift your hand and say yes to Jesus. If you're in this atmosphere and you haven't said yes to Jesus, you can't go back in your mind and remember a time that you surrendered your life to Jesus and, listen, your life changed from that decision. You need to raise your hand now. We're going to pray with you and God's going to change your life. Thank you for, for being online. I can't see you, but God can, and the Lord is there with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl with hand is lifted up. We're ready to give our life to walk with you, Jesus, to change our world. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I commit my life to you as Lord, Savior, Master, and King. Forgive me for my sins, my mistakes, my failures. Write my name in your book of life. It is sealed and settled forever in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen means so be it. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen.